For Francis to leave as the reigning heavyweight champion is a uh, is very uh, different situation. Something we're not accustomed to seeing. But that leaves us with John Jones versus Cyril Gaon for the heavyweight championship rule. Now let me ask you this: Isn't it ironic? Isn't it a bit ironic, guys, that John Jones is fighting for a vacant championship? I mean, do you guys remember when I went through when I won the belt? No, it's different, right? John hasn't fought Francis before. But isn't it ironic that he's in this situation now? My advice to you, John, is if you win the fight, get thick skin. Because people will be unrelenting. Right now, because Francis left, it's almost like Francis avoided Jones. That's not true. Francis would have fought John Jones on any day of the week. Let's not get crazy, fans. Fans always come up with these ideas. But trust me, Jones, it's going to flip to... Is he the real champion because he didn't beat Francis Ngannou if he won that fight against Cyril Gaon? Which, by the way, is not guaranteed because Cyril Gaon is as good as they come. I honestly believe that this matchup is a much better matchup for us as fans because technically you have two guys that are going to be as skilled as we have ever seen in the heavyweight division. This is coming from me, a guy that has fought in the heavyweight division, a guy that's held the championship and fought some of the best in the world. Cyril Gaon's movement in the way that he attacks is going to make him very difficult for Jones because for as good as Jones is, Jones isn't a guy that moves very much. He's very stationary and going forward. He's long, so he used those long-range weapons to, to, to really take control of guys like me and other guys that he fought in the octagon. But he's not a guy that moves around and creates a ton of angles. A lot of straight long-range weapons, front kick, his jab, right hand, and his knees whenever you try to attack him. A lot of, but the issue is with Cyril Gaon is you're going to have a big guy that possesses a lot of those same qualities with the ability to move. Go back and watch Jones. Pretty flat-footed. He's pretty flat-footed. Gaon isn't. And you know what makes this even more interesting? Is that after watching Francis and Gaon, like the immediate thought is, Jones is going to use his wrestling to beat him. That's going on in my group message right now. But you've got to think, after Francis took Cyril Gaon down last year to win that fight, that Cyril Gaon has worked diligently in order to improve his takedown defense. So what happens if Jones can't take Cyril Gaon down? What happens if Jones is forced to stand with this guy? What we saw in the Gaon fight against uh, Tai Tuivasa is, even though he can be hurt, even though most fights look pretty, Cyril Gaon is a dog. And when he needed to be against Tai, he just fought Tai. Not only did he just fight Tai, he finished Tai Tuivasa. Get tough skin, John Jones, because they're going to say it, or Cyril Gaon. Cyril, it'll be worse for Cyril Gaon if he wins, because he lost to Francis Ngannou. And they will say, well, you were the interim champion. Then you lost to the champion. He left, and now you're the champion. So, guys... Get tough skin, but boy, it's a bit ironic that Jones finds himself in this situation. The world works in a circle, and so we find ourselves here. Jones still holds some advantages, though. I think his fight IQ is unmatched. I think his preparation is going to be really, really high level, especially seeing that he's working with Henry Cejudo. Because, for, like I've said time and time again, for everything you may think of Cejudo, he's a brilliant fight mind. He's a brilliant competitive mind. There aren't many people like Henry Cejudo in the history of sports. So Jones going there is a very smart decision, at least I believe, in terms of helping him prepare. How does Jones carry the weight? I, I imagine he'll be 240, 245 walking into the octagon. During his heyday, I bet he was at 221, 222. He always had fantastic cardio, but his fight IQ was what separated himself from a lot of guys. Cyril Gaon also possesses that. Cyril also possesses a very high fight IQ and ability to lock in and zone in. Even look at the Francis fight. Through those first three rounds, he was cruising because he's fighting the way that he wants to fight. It's a massive fight, guys. If you're not going to get Jones and Ganu, this is the one you wanted. This one right here is the one you wanted because you have two guys, extremely skilled, super ready to fight, and both dying to become the heavyweight world champion. Hold on, guys. Coach DC. Hey! Coach DC sometimes has to get the kids in order, you know. They start to get a little jibber-jabber. Massive fight March 4th.
and I'll get to be there. I, for a long time, said that I wasn't going to commentate these fights. I'm commentating this one because it's exciting. It's exciting to see a move that we've anticipated since 2010. There was a time where we thought John Jones would fight a heavyweight when Cain Velasquez was the champion, when Brock Lesnar was the champion. Hell, when Shane Carwin was the champion, we thought we may see Jones a heavyweight. We finally get to see him now in 2023 in the T-Mobile Arena against what I believe is the most difficult challenge in the heavyweight division for him. Glad that the deal got made with Jones. Glad that the fight with Gan got made. Also happy for Francis Ngannou to have an opportunity to go out there and find what his value is. He's the baddest man on the planet, and the baddest man on the planet made a bet on himself. Let's see how that works out.